Good morning and welcome to worship this beautiful summer day. Summer, spring, we're kind of in that in-between time, but the temperatures tell me it's summer, right? My name is Pam Smith and it's my pleasure to welcome you to worship today uh, here at Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lakeland, Florida. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter and so we, our Easter celebration continues. Um, we've got a couple of Sundays left. And of course, today is also Mother's Day. My friends, I am fortunate. I had a mother who loved me. And despite a time of despair in her life and a singular horrible decision, she continued to be one of the strongest women that I've ever known. I had a godmother who stepped in to take care of me when my mom couldn't because of that decision. I have three sons. Sounds like a sitcom, right? I have three sons whom I love and who love me. And they have daughters, and I have daughters-in-law who are fabulous and of course a granddaughter. And so Mother's Day is a day of pleasant reflection for me. But I know also that that is not everyone's experience. And so today, let us be mindful of the fact that there are some whose, whose mothers have hurt or are hurting them in ways that linger. That there are some who ache to be mothers, but their bodies just won't do it. There are mothers who are on adoption waiting lists for a long time. There are some who are missing their mothers desperately. There are some whose mothers struggle with the role of what it means to be a mother during this time. There are some who are mothers of children who have died. There are some who are estranged from their mothers or from their children. And there are some who struggle in ways that I can't even really imagine. So as much as we rejoice in Mother's Day, for those of us in families where that is a day of rejoicing, let us be aware of the fact that many feel pain and discomfort today. And let us remember that as we go about our days at the restaurant or even here in church or at the checkout line and all the happy Mother's Days ring out. We need to be mindful of those who experience things differently than we do. That said, I do wish you a blessed Mother's Day on this time because each of us have had a mother who gave us life and for that we are grateful. Just a couple of announcements. We continue our worship service in this hybrid way. That's one of the new terms among worship people these days. Hybrid worship, worship in person in this limited way that we are and also online because we are streaming through Facebook Live and also through our web page. Beginning on Pentecost, May 23rd, you'll want to make note of this, we are going back to one service, one service at 10 o'clock. So those of you who are here, you don't need to make a change, but we're going back to one service at 10 o'clock as our winter visitors have returned north and as the summer comes upon us. I don't believe that there are other announcements. Yes, there's one more. This month, we are collecting items for the Res House in Dade City, Florida. Res House is an ELCA mission church that does amazing service to the community there, the community of farm laborers, migrant workers. The need is great. And so you've received some information in the mail or in email, and I would direct your attention back to that. Uh, you can bring things in to drop off today between, help me out, somebody on social ministry. Um, what time is Dan? Dan, just shout it out, please. Okay. 11 to 12.30 today and then on the fourth Sunday of the month, okay? So we always collect on the second and the fourth. My apologies for not having that quick at hand. So with that, then let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship.
stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may remain standing or be seated as Harold sings our opening hymn on our behalf. love prevail there God is ever found brought here together by Christ's love by love we thus are bound with grateful joy and holy fear God's charity we learn let us with heart and mind and soul now love God in return. Let us recall that in our midst dwells Christ God's holy Son as members of each body joined in him we are made one. Let strife among us be unknown. Let all contention cease. Be God the glory that we seek. Be his our only peace. Let us forgive each other's faults as we are on confess that we may love each other well in Christian gentleness. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia made new by the resurrection life that we share in Christ. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So Peter ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read our psalm responsibly by whole verse. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. 
His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nation. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy. At the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Would you please stand for the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mother's Day, a highly commercialized day in our society. It started in the early 1900s by a woman who was named Anna Jarvis. She wanted to honor her mother, who in fact had cared for the wounded on both sides of the Civil War, and who, along with Juliet Ward Howe, the noted suffragette, urged the creation of a Mother's Day dedicated to the cause of peace. Well, it was only a few years later that Hallmark started selling Mother's Day cards. Mother's Day. I learned that even more people dine out on Mother's Day than on Valentine's Day. And the National Retail Federation a couple of years ago said, I can hardly believe this, the average person will spend $152 on Mother's Day that year. Now, I'm here to tell you, my kids didn't do that, and I'm very proud of them for that. <laughs> Yeah, Mother's Day is a very important day in our society. In fact, one commentator, with his tongue firmly implanted on his cheek, said that liturgically speaking, Easter might better be known as the fifth Sunday before Mother's Day. Mother's Day. We hear words of love on Mother's Day. And so perhaps it is fitting today's gospel reading where we hear Jesus talking about love. 
But before we turn to that, listen to what some kids have to say about love. I do these almost every year because they tickle me so. Rebecca, who's eight, said this. When my grandmother got arthritis, she couldn't bend over and paint her toenails anymore, so my grandfather does it for her all the time, even when his hands got arthritis too. That's love. Billy, who's four, said this, and, and this is nearly profound. When someone loves you, the way they say your name is different. You know that your name is safe in their mouth. Isn't that profound? Wow. And then Lauren. Lauren is the eternal optimist. She's four, and she said, I know my older sister loves me because she gives me all her old clothes and she has to go out and buy new ones. <laughs> Karen, who's seven, said, when you love somebody, your eyelashes go up and down and little stars come out of you. And then Jessica, who is eight. You really shouldn't say I love you unless you mean it. But if you mean it, you should say it a lot. People forget. Ah, out of the mouth of babes. I'm reminded of the show, um, it's just kind of made a comeback. Kids say the darndest things. Yeah, yeah, love. So today's gospel reading has something to say about love. In fact, if you count up the number of times that Jesus says the word love in these nine verses, nine times, nine times in nine verses, love is pretty important to Jesus. Now, as we look back over these past few weeks of Easter, we have moved progressively farther and farther away from the tomb. So it was on Easter Sunday, we stood outside the tomb, looking in, seeing it empty, marveling at the power of God to destroy even death. Then we gathered with the disciples behind locked doors in Jerusalem as Jesus showed himself to them, his wounded hands and his feet, his pierced side. Then we sat with the disciples as they were with Jesus when during one of his appearances he said, do you have something here to eat? But since then, we have been moving away from the tomb and out into the world just as Jesus told his disciples that they too would move from the tomb to bear witness to him in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and all the ends of the world. And like them, we too move out into the world, the world where we live, out into the world where others live, out into the world where even our enemies live, out into the world where the stranger lives. And we bear witness to the resurrection power of Christ. We speak in his name, we act girded up with the power of the Holy Spirit so that, two of the most important words in scripture, so that we can keep Jesus' commandment to love one another. Now what is this love anyway? Too often we think of love in a romantic sense. We think of love as that cozy, warm, and soft feeling that we have in our hearts when we feel safe and secure and just plain good. And that may be love indeed, but that's not all that love is. Jesus said in today's gospel that no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for another. Lay down to relinquish what rightfully might be one's own. To lay down, to place at the disposal of another. Lay down, to offer up. To lay down one's life. 
Now, this does not mean only or even primarily our physical life, our living and breathing life. What Jesus is speaking of here goes beyond even that, to that which makes us us, the stuff that is most important to us, being willing to yield to our perceived rights and entitlements, to the side, to put all of that to the side for the greater good, for a common good, the good of others. What, Lord? That's easy for you to say, you might think. And then we think back to the Garden of Gethsemane and Calvary and remember that it isn't easy at all. No, laying down one's life can run counter to every instinct that we have, but the love that we are called to is the supernatural love of God in Christ, the supernatural love that flowed in our baptisms, the water that marked us as God's own people, chosen unmistakably by Jesus, chosen so that we would bear fruit, and not just any fruit, but fruit that would last, fruit that will endure, fruit that is love. Yes, we gather together every Sunday, whether in person, as we have just resumed, or online. We gather together because of love, the love that Jesus has for us, and the love that we have for each other. Love that mourns with the grieving, love that visits the sick, Love that waters our plants and prunes our trees. Love that calls one who's been on our mind or heart for a time. Love that cleans the apartment of one who is sick. Love that serves a plate of food. Love that offers a place of rest. Love that prays for another. Love that puts aside our own self-interest for the sake of another. For over 2,000 years, the mark of the Christian community is this love. See these Christians, how they love one another. But my friends, I'm sure you'll agree that love is not always easy. When a decision is facing us then, the question I must ask is, what is the loving thing that I might do? When a response is made or must be made, and before I can utter words that I will regret, the question I must ask is, how can I speak love into this situation? Yeah, I know this isn't always easy, and I, I know that I fail more times likely than even I realize. Yet, by God's good grace, by God's love, I am forgiven. Yes, we love one another here, but my friends, we love one another so that, having been fed and nourished and strengthened and loved, we can go and do likewise in a world that needs the witness, the very resurrection power of Jesus' love. May the Holy Spirit guide us and direct us and give us a will to follow. May it be so. Amen. Jesus, Jesus. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. Masters who acts as a slave to them. Yesu, Yesu. 
Fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches around the world that their witness to the love of Jesus be bold. Hear us, O oh God. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar, the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love so that by their song, all creatures of land and sea and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join with them in praise. Hear us, O God. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons, but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Caring healer, none is beyond the reach of your love. Be present with those who are sick or suffering, particularly Elena, Jenna, Marilyn, Jared and Julia, Nick, Julie, Marcella, Michael, Ken, Jack, Anne, Joanne, Sandy, Beth, Betty, Dion, Dottie, Teresa, Dottie, Tim, Glenn, Henry, Mary, Greg, Ann Joyce, Sue, Barbara, Shelby. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us toward life-changing responses to, those, to these needs in our own communities. Be with the dying. Hear us, O God. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and all nurturing people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O God. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving those who shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, my friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you. You noted perhaps that there are offering plates in the rear of the sanctuary. You may place your offerings there. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death 
and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Come. With your holy ones of all times and places, with all your beloved creation, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. During this season of Easter and under these unusual circumstances in which we find ourselves, we will commune at the head of the aisle. We will commune in one kind only. You will receive the host, the wafer. We ask that you not use the center aisle um, because of the equipment needs that we have. We will alternate pew by pew, side by side. So we will begin in the front on this side, and then we will do the first pew on this side, and we'll alternate back and forth. We do that in order to minimize the time that we are spent in close proximity one to the other. Please, my friends, come. All is now ready.
Would you please stand? <clears throat> and now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, preserve us unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now my friends, as we prepare again to depart this place, to go into a world that needs the love of Jesus so, know that love in your life has been poured out for you. The Holy Spirit has empowered and guided and directing you. Go now with the blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we leave this place, we will be dismissed out from the back first, going on out. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Oh, I forgot the hymn. You can do it. Ed. We're gonna we're gonna sing because we need to hear this over and over. We're, Harold is going to sing on our behalf. Jesus loves me. I always say I don't go back, but this time we are. We need to. Okay, let's sing. Okay. Let's Harold sing. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong, yes Jesus loves me, yes Jesus loves me, yes Jesus loves me, the Bible Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he will stay close beside me all the way. When at last I come to die, he will take me home on high. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me. As we were leaving, one person came up to me and said, Pastor, I've not sung that song for 50 years. 50 years. Many of us learned it in Sunday school. Let it be a very pleasant earworm to you this week. Jesus loves you.